My dear guests, welcome to Fantasy Island. Welcome to Colombia! <laughs> can, I have a, can I have a bite? Puedo uno? Poco? Right. No? A 500. Really? <laughs> the gente de Colombia is muy amable. It's Britney, bitch. Get the money and the passports back up. Bring half what you brought from the last spot. Don't worry, I'll tell you later. Just hurry and meet me at the terminal Till you feel it like your head might pop off Brain dead and you're scared that your heart stop Keep chasing, you'll catch a lady She's waiting to show her crazy world to you Amigo, ella tiene dolor. Duele mucho. Porque ella no ha adelantado. Mami, explícale. Sí, amor, tranquila, que sí. se cuenta. Wow, it's crazy. Ana, es mami acá, que me está quedando la fa. Jesus. Amor, ven para acá. Es que ella no ha adelantado el proyecto. Me voy porque te vas a descansar y ya hablamos. Que llega un nuevo día. Hola Medellín, es hora de despertar. No importa en la cama de quién estés. I went to clear my head far out of the city, thinking about Isabel's words, wanting to understand more, wanting to know this old land, maybe even find the child beneath to learn how the land has grown. Cheating is everywhere, but what gave it its flavor here? Quieres que te explique cómo somos las mujeres en Medellín, cómo llevamos una relación. Hay niñas que creen que desde los 13 años dependen de sus novios y se crean emocionalmente para mantener dentro de su acto social. Probablemente se casarán con sus novios de 13 años por miedo a conocerse a sí mismo. Es una mente cerrada. En Colombia no somos así. Mucho antes de que las parejas vivían juntos, iban al cine, se tomaban de la mano tres o cuatro horas. El sexo sucede secretamente en motelos del amor. La colaboración, el compromiso, la lealtad. Si usted no tiene alguna vez la oportunidad de aprender acerca de la otra persona, ¿cómo podría conocerte a ti mismo? Por eso hay muchas trampas, hay muchas trampas del amor. Hay un montón de trampas que no te dejan conocerte a ti mismo. Nos colombianos somos personas muy sexys, entregados, sexy, nos gusta vestir sexy, seducir a los hombres y quieren conquistar el mundo con eso, siendo sexys. Pero creo que no estamos lo suficientemente maduros para eso. <risa> es chistoso, ¿verdad? <risa> ¿Entiendes? When you marry and you cheat on the girl and you have another girl and they find you and say, oh, you put cachos to this girl. ¿Qué es cachos? Dime. Cachos. Muchos cachos en tu país. Ah, uh, you make them like into the fool. Exactly. It's normal. O lo regular más de uno hace eso, cae todo, por ahí del 100% el 99.9%. Sí, hace eso. Claro. It's allowed. We allow it. 
los cachos para ti. Lo aceptaría. Women, women here are okay with it. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you or loves you any less. It's just that just pretend it didn't happen. Like any other Latin American country. If she already has a boyfriend and she's willing to go with you, I'm not. I'm not suggesting this at all. I think this is a really stupid thing to do. I think it's a good way to get yourself killed and just, you know, keep that for the record. But oftentimes, what I've seen, if I want to have a relationship like the kind of relationship that I would have in America, the easiest way to develop a really, truly loving relationship, a relationship where there's no pretext, a relationship where it's not about who you know and uh, what you do and how much you make and so on and so forth is if you're with somebody who already has all of that taken care of and they're with you because they're attracted to you because they really like you for who you are. I need to process all this shit. I actually understand what he just said though. In a relationship, people can feel more available and free to be themselves. But still, why exactly would love and affection be easier and desired when you already have someone else filling that role? Did you go to the gym? I'm blessing this. Very little. <laughs> ah, very little. If you're not like me, I would judge you. We're very judgmental. Very judgmental. ¿Cuánto tiempo estás en este gimnasio? ¿Uno vez? No. ¿Uno año? Eight. Eight months. Okay. Today, one hour. Ah, uh, you're, but you're strong now? Strong. Are you a fighter? Fighter. ¿Sabes como uh, box, no? Mud wrestling? Solo cardio. ¿Por qué solo car cardio? Las chicas piensan que es suficiente para... ¿Cómo se dice? Grasa. Grasa, grasa, ya. Yeah. Como que no se siente el ejercicio. Ajá. Cuando uno sube, sí. You don't like the sweat. You got a sweat, girl. ¿Es tú es militario o...? Policía. Policía. <laughs> Decoración. Tatiana. Tatiana. Militario. Policía. Militario. Peligroso. ¿Cuándo vamos a tomar uh, uno café juntos? No puedo. ¿Por qué? No tengo tiempo. No tengo tiempo. Estoy corriendo. Yo estudio, trabajo, no tengo tiempo de nada. No, no, no. Vamos a comer algo uno día. Dame tu número. We're not in the narrative of the story now. I'm still on the motorcycle, remember? Thinking, dreaming, searching for answers, and above all, trying to make a damn point here. A really strongly defined social class structure here. Is that a real thing? A real thing? Yeah. It's it? a very real thing. For in my time in Colombia, I would learn that the upper class girls want to know that you're sticking around. Security and stability is a big thing for everyone here, but like B.I.G. say, more money, more problems. In contrast to a barrio girl who's just as beautiful and may never have met an obnoxious foreigner before. You guys have super duper tushes. <laughs> yeah, but you still have a super duper tush. Wow, you're really pretty. ¿Cuánto años tienes? 18. 18. Nos está sí. cumpliendo. Hoy es yo, no, sí. yo también. Ah, no. Dame tu número. ¿Tienes? 321. ¿Tú? Sí. ¿Y tienes nombre también o no? Sí. sí. Como, Esmeralda. Es muy bonita. Esmeralda. Gracias. Mucho gusto a las niñas. Mucho gusto. Chao. And it gets very blurry because in the high stratas you get both the wealthy educated girls but you also get the models or girls married to the mob. The high mafia here is part of the upper class. They started from the bottom, now they here. And it's the same thing with the models and actors. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but they say in Medellin that every girl has her price. With perhaps the most famous incident being Colombia's top news anchor selling herself to some Don Corleone for $20,000 or something like that. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. There are basically four types of girls, although you don't see this right away. There are four different kinds of girls happening in six 
six different categories that are institutionalized in this country. Everyone is aware of them. Everyone has an, an awareness of their own number, one through six, having to do with their social economic classing. So let me just jump right to it. Category number one is a very worldly kind of girl, international girl. She's traveled a lot. Um, she probably speaks a chunk of English or some English. She has money. Her family has money. Whether it's legitimate money or narco traffic money, it doesn't matter. So then you have class number two. Class number two is like a barrio girl. Uh, a girl from uh, the suburbs. She's excited to meet somebody new. She's excited to have an opportunity to try a different restaurant. She's open and she's interested. Class number three is what they call a grija. This is a girl who's also open and interested, but she's kind of the, um, the girlfriend experience. She's a party girl, she likes to go to the club, she dresses very provocatively, kind of like girls might dress in America um, going out at night. She's not outright asking for anything from you, but she knows, or you know, that in the end she's gonna want a little help. And then you have class number four, which is the outright prostitute. They call them prepagos, prepaid girls. And then you have kind of variations. You have the uh, one plus, you have the two minus. So, you know, that's the ideal girl. If you meet a girl like that, marry her right away. This girl doesn't expect anything from you, but she's also not going to be snobby towards you. It's like the pattern you see in the political spectrum. You know, they meet at the extremes. The left's desire for sustainable autonomy and the right's desire for conservative autonomy, both ultimately wanting to reduce the need for government. Well, this has nothing to do with that random. But what I'm saying is that they meet at the extremes. You have type 4 girls with type 1 girls mingling in strata 6, which to the American eye starts to make everything look like strata 2. And yet the same club or hotel with 4s and 1s won't even let a girl in from strata 3. But a hooker who's rolling 5.0 with her mob man is no problem. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but it doesn't matter whether it's upper or lower class. You would have to get her outside of her circle. Hey, what do you Andres? Luisa. The culture would not accept them. People don't want to be seen with other people that might make them look bad. Canada? Canada. Or your family. You don't see people with Down syndrome in this city. No. They hide them. No. Because it's... Nobody wants to show the imperfection of a perfect family. Tienes numero? Okay, vamos a hablar después. Have your haircut. Come on, it's come on. La mia vest que yo yo vi, ¿cómo se dice? Yo veo, yo vi. Lo veo. Cada vez que lo veo. Sí. Sí, tú hablas español. Sí. No te preocupes. So yeah, the extremes of every paradigm always meet at some blind, self-eating contradiction. Like the ancient Euroboros serpent that slowly gobbles its own body from the tail. The poor woman with pretty jeans learns to drink from the tower. The victim is redeemed as the hunter. It's the great ingenuity of the gold digger, whence the head and the ass start to eat each other. Is it symbiosis or antibiosis? Who gives a fuck? Just eat. Because in the end, the circle is devoured unbroken in the Colombian supermodel. Gobble, gobble. People here have not experienced. They're not proud of who they are. Punk rocks and all this diversity that you see in the US where this is who I am and I don't care. Is that Medellin or is that Colombia? Medellin. We're raised very conservative. Hmm, okay. Pillar number one, social strata and self-image. But is that enough to explain all the guardedness and cheating? Okay, so it's a macho culture. Do the guys fight a lot at the bars? Not really. No fights. We don't fight by fits over here. Something happens over here that's for real. Compared to New York, for example, when she walks out of a bar at 4 o'clock in the morning and gets in a taxi, she doesn't have to worry that she's going to be robbed and raped. So when you see two guys in an argument and you see them split off and go back to somewhere else, it's not because they're scared, it's because they went to go get some guns. Exactly. If you mess with the wrong guy, you can get killed very easy. In a country like this, she always has to worry about that sort of thing. Especially where both insecurity and security are ever present. Eso es para asesinar elefantes, no para no, no, no. Ah, elefantes. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. 646. Ay, no, 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 no. 
She has to worry about who she's talking to at all times because something could actually happen. You have to be careful, very, very careful in this city. And conscientious of other people's sense of security. I know, no, no, thank you. Now that was really dumb of me. In traffic like that, Later I was to learn that car muggings and traffic are a thing here, and the motorcyclists all have to wear ID numbers ever since they perfected the art of the drive-by shooting. But remember, can you talk to the girls on the street? No, sir. I too had to be cautious. The guy you asked him for the light, did it like this, he never remembered anything happens after that. Excuse me? Como te llamas? Stop. Como te llama? Andrew. That's muy linda. ¿Qué, qué te piensas? ¿Una chica prostituta o...? Sí, muy grande. La primera vez muy linda, pero después un poco peligroso. ¿Es difícil caminar con eso? Un poquito. Un poquitito. Pero se acostumbra. Ah, sí. ¿Cómo te llamo? Luisa. Andrés. Luisa. Qué gusto. Cuando vamos a tomar algo juntos. Bueno, me voy, tengo que entrar. Dame tu número. I have only my phone, so I had to pick up my phone in order to get her phone number. I was sort of challenging myself. You're not supposed to touch girls anywhere, but um, here in particular, there's a real defensiveness. So I loved her haircut. You know, she had this really neat like slash. So I, I touched her hair and I shocked her, and she told me I shocked her. And rightly so. It is all about insecurity and security, so that's the topic not only of this episode, but of our lives. Do you think that always looking over their shoulder made people more nervous? Of course, yeah. Do you think that everyone has had some exposure to something violent? Everyone knows someone. I don't know if it's a part of their family, but everybody know, everyone knows someone that's been kicked out. Not that you know of the story, you know of someone that's been kidnapped. It did damage the trust. It did. Entonces, hace ocho años, secuestraron a mi hermano. Se llama Mauricio. I had started to cry, but Luisa seemed steadfast, already having agreed to let me film this part of the night. Pero. Hay algo en mí que me dice que todavía está vivo y que algún día va a regresar. Estoy preparada para la llegada de él, pero para saber de que él ya no va a volver jamás, no estoy preparada para eso. Medellin being the 2012 most innovative city in the world, we'd like to think that the narco traffic history is a thing of the past. It's just normal. I mean, it's not normal, but it is for them. They all think that they're going to come back. They hope. The women hope. I have a fucking girl that I used to make out with. I never fucked her because she had all the same problems. And her dad disappeared when she was four years old. And she still has all kinds of shit on her Facebook. She's a normal fucking girl. She's hot. Dad, you know, we're looking for you. We hope you come. Like, looking for this guy. And she's fucking, like, old. She was a little girl when he left. That's normal. And so that somehow must affect, like, the cheating, just the natural distrust between people. The fact that you could fucking, somebody could call you up and you fucking think you're going to hang out with your friend and then you're dead. Yeah, of course. And everyone seems to know somebody who's had that. Yeah. It's an ambiguous thread that I was weaving, the distrust over security and the distrust over lovers. And although you could not trace a clear line between the two, the whole land seemed rich with the anxiety over safety and strangers, the yearning yet restraint to know someone else, the secrets, the affairs. And it was this dense, religious, sexualized, proud, inhibited history that was so alive to me, wild, bottled up, and bursting with asphyxiated passion. And if you're watching from Colombia, I found this fascinating because we don't see women get pat-downs in bars in America, and fascinating because Colombian women are beautiful. And they say gracias, 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 even around unwanted authority, which is a contradiction of the Wild West mentality that I can't wait to explore in Volume 3. 
And of course, Paisas are very courteous, and I sometimes wondered whether this was a reaction to avoid conflict in a climate of ongoing distrust. And this is what I'm saying, it's alive. Visit and get around a bit in this country, it's never boring. It's magical. Whoa, that's too much. And something was happening. I was falling in love with this place. I found Pablo Gomez Geraldo busking up the buses, and we rented a studio to record this song. And then I realized my second pillar, first social strata, then security, and I needed a third S. It says in the Bible that the woman would be submissive to her husband. Mm -hmm. He will respect her, but she will be submissive to him. Something about the religion, you can do whatever and then ask for forgiveness. Bad girl is the one that the guy cheated on with. The guy is not the bad one, right? I mean, you gotta forgive him. Do you avoid dating Colombian guys if you can? Yes. <laughs> Women in Colombia were raised to take care of the family. They depend 100% on the man. She can't live without him. And that itself allows the guy to do whatever he wants. And so why wouldn't the girl do the same? Social strata, security, and of course, sin. I traveled around Colombia's amazing province of Antioquia, thinking, absorbing, taking photos, jerking different thoughts around in my head, wondering if these three pillars could explain some of the cheating and certainly amount to many of the challenges I would face. I called this trifecta the axis of abstinence. Unlike neighboring Peru and Ecuador and Bolivia, indigenous culture was all but wiped out in Colombia. With no geographic capital, the Colonials established a decentralized country that has had interprovincial conflicts since 1796. So maybe I'm reaching too far to connect the dots, but I wonder whether my axis affected the fundamental faith and trust that people have in each other, even beyond the norms of Latin machista culture. But then, fast forward, and there I was. I left Isabel's and put the bike away. I felt like taking buses around including this one trip to go horseback riding in the countryside. Ah, <laughs> 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 
de todo. Sí, Luis Salcedo. Eh, yo, un periodista. ¿Ah? Yo, pues eso. Eh, eso es comunicación social. Escribe de tópicos. Sí, me hago yo. Usted me lo comentó. En Rupa. Ajá, va Pinti. Little, little pony. Estamos en como unos short bus. Ah, ¿qué estaba? Antes ah, somos especiales. Muy bueno. Por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Por de... ¿De los caballos? No, sexo. No, no sé. <risa> sexo o el caballo, no. No, Andrés, no, por favor. <risa> Yo no sé cómo hacer, ¿ah? ¿eh? ¿No? No. ¿Tienes uno en plástico para mí? Wow, I'm on a fucking horse. It's alive. Es como uh, avatar. Tenemos que Hey, buddy. Say hello, you're my horse. Oh, no. Oh, no. Luisa, yo no sé cómo hacer. ¿Sí? Si vas a girar hacia allá, le haces así. Okay. Si vas a girar hacia allá, le haces así. Sí. Para que deje de caminar, la agarras de acá duro. Porque si lo haces así, si sí, lo Sí, continuo. Bueno. They gave me the craziest horse, I'm sure. It's the Wild West, Colombia. You don't sign a thing. Gone with the wind. I could see a lawsuit at every turn if we were in America. That's the coolest thing ever. Very cool, baby. You can eat, buddy. Maravilloso. She hands you this bottle of what looks like 7-Up, but it's actually this hardcore schnapps, like floored me. It's like a big swig. Totally fucked my head. <laughs> If she wasn't already a dream come true, her beauty was multiplying by the acre and the saturation of my liver. As always, the chase was on. I caught up to her. I lost her. The night started to come on. The fact that she lived alone, a total rarity in Medellin, the fact that she was well-traveled, obviously had money, was smart and self-sufficient, what did she care what other people thought? Couldn't she be into me without already having a boyfriend? I was entranced, fixated. She was a princess on a tequila unicorn. And so the dream began. Me siento muy relajado contigo, como ir en el baño. But I lost the reins somehow. 
She was suddenly not available that week. But eventually we did have dinner and I started to tell her why I felt so comfortable with her. Tú estás muy como normal, internacional. Tenemos sexo rápido. Solamente la ganas natural. Sexo bueno. Las otras chicas en tu país, en general, piense mucho, mucho. No, no puedo. Piense de religión. Mucho piense de que piense los otros. Y piense de duda, de perder. Alma o yo no sé. Um, para ti, tú haces... No, es natural. Es natural. Es natural porque cuando te conocí, estaba con alguien. Estaba con alguien. Estaba con alguien. The easiest way to develop a really, truly loving relationship is if you're with somebody who already has all of that taken care of. <laughs> oh, shit. The prophecies were true. Now I had to get to the bottom of this. Si no tenías novio, estaría tan tranquilita en la cama conmigo o estaría más prevenida. prevenida. I was at a loss, but the anthropologist in me wanted to keep digging. Estabas relajada a hacer sexo conmigo porque tenía novio. Es más tranquila porque cuando tienes alguien Sexo, dale! <laughs> Who knows what to think anymore? I don't know what she really thought. She was free. Medellin is wild free, I tell you. Religiously and socially conservative, and wild because of it. But I looked dead, didn't I? But I wasn't. But it wasn't for lack of trying, I tell you. Actually, this last bait put me in a coma. A coma I was to lie in for four weeks. And when I woke up, I was damn hairy. And I went on what the movie advertisements referred to as a roaring rampage of revenge. I roared and I rampaged and I got bloody satisfaction. I went on a hell of a lot of dates to get to this point, but I have only one more, the last one. The one I'm searching for right now, the only one left. And when I find her, I'm gonna marry that girl. The most common question I get is, how do you get the girls to get naked? My answer is, go out of your house, find someone you think is beautiful, pursue them with your whole heart, make her want to rediscover her beauty for herself, ask sincerely to film this beauty, don't be a douche, be intimate, be real, don't be afraid, repeat. Hey baby. Tengo tu permisión para hacer, um, para mostrar video en mi um, sitio internet. Si haces algo bonito. Sí. ¿Cómo? Si haces algo bonito. Si es bonito, sí. Sí. If you're wondering how I convert uh, her shock into acceptance, um, what I'm doing in that moment is giving her a big, indifferent smile. Just come. 
completely on my own accord, just smiling, happy for myself. And that's not everybody's way, you know. Everybody has a different personality. Some people are more stern, like the way that I feel um, this morning. I don't have that jubilant air, uh, which I'll pick up later in the afternoon. But again, everybody has different personalities, so we can't have these expectations that we should be this way or that way. But you have to get to know your own instincts so that rejection can get much more quickly put into perspective and you're not carrying it with you along the way. You want to be in a centered enough place that no one can take a rise out of you. Because once you know your own process, you're much, much more likely to see the other person's process and not take anything really personally. There are essentially two ways that you can come by a fearless approach in any situation, in any context, be it with a lover, a woman, um, be it approaching an authority figure, anything where you feel that there is this tension, this friction between myself and the other. Friction requires two elements to have friction, but if you're completely engaged, completely focused, one with the other person, all you see is that, and therefore the fear in oneself dissipates. People don't realize the reverb going on in our minds. It's like bringing a microphone up to a loudspeaker, which is actually really paralyzing to a lot of people, but we just accept it, even though that fear is happening in our own bodies, even though we think it's the other person that's causing it, but it's not, it's you. This is you. This is the opportunity to go home, to find within yourself a place that is truly your own without being shaken ever from that. And if you can have this realization at a pre-conscious level, it opens a powerful freedom in a world of intimacy and communication beyond anything that any book or teacher or game theory or bullshit technique can teach you. A powerful world of freedom, a powerful world of intimacy, a powerful world of communication and spontaneity. Uh, and I'll be offering courses in that, so stay tuned for this. Thank you.